Hi Engineering Janta, I am Vaibhav Shukla and today we will be understanding and learning the top 15 questions of SQL which often appear and are the most expected ones to come in the tech interviews. There are a lot of students who are having their interviews scheduled. A lot of them are messaging me that within three months they will be entering seventh semester and very soon their placement season would start. So for that you should be geared up with SQL, you should study it hard. But if you're somebody who needs a quick recap of SQL or if you're somebody who wants to know the most important and repeated topics of SQL in the various tech interviews, various rounds of tech interviews, then this video is for you. So let's go ahead. Even if you're somebody who's trying learning SQL from scratch, this will help you out to identify which are the most important topics. Fine. So before I proceed further, follow me on Instagram at Shuklaji Speaks so that you can directly connect with me and ping me directly there if you have any doubt. Let's go ahead and let's see the first question. This is the first question. Primary key versus foreign key. And whenever I tell about any preparation plan, whenever I discuss about DBMS, the first thing I tell you is read about keys. So primary key and foreign key is often asked. Primary key uniquely identifies each record in a table and cannot be null. Whereas foreign key, it is a field or collection of fields in one table that refers to the primary key in another table. This is basically used to relate two tables together. Fine. So moving on to the second question, what is normalization? So normalization is a process of organizing data within a database, fine, to eliminate data anomalies such as redundancy. In simpler terms, agar CD CD baat karu, to it involves breaking down a large complex table into smaller and simpler tables while maintaining data relationships. While appearing for interview, you should surely mention this point, specifically this point. This is going to get you some extra brownie points and interestingly, recruiter would believe and would know that you have studied normalization well. Fine. Now going forward, the next question is truncate versus delete versus drop. These are three commands. And these three commands are often repeatedly used in SQL, but they have very different usage and application at the backend. So what is that? Delete is an SQL command that removes one or multiple rows from a table using various conditions. Fine. So if you want to remove one or multiple rows using some conditions, delete is the command you go for. But you also have one more command, truncate. This command is used when you have to remove all the rows from a table without using any condition. If you want that all rows should vanish, then simply truncate would go. Fine. And let me tell you, this cannot be rolled back. Truncate, if you've done truncate, this cannot be rolled back. Delete can be rolled back, number one. Number two, truncate and drop, both of these are DDL, data definition language. And this delete is from data manipulation language. Now, what are these? We'll just end in this video further, fine. But truncate cannot be rolled back. Now remember, truncate deletes all the rows, not the table structure. If you want to delete the entire table, the structure of table as well as the data of table, then for that, you need to use drop command, fine. So I hope the difference between these is very, very clear. And then we move forward and we talk about DDL and DML, as I told you. The next thing we are going to cover is DDL versus DML. So DDL is data definition language. It is a type of SQL command used to define data, structures and modify data. So if you carefully see, it is modifying the structure altogether. This is also modifying the structure. It is not just modifying, it is removing the structure altogether. That's why they are DDL and that's why delete is DML because DML is a Data manipulation language is a type of SQL command used to manipulate data in a database. So here you just do manipulations. You don't alter structures here. Fine. In DDL, create, alter, drop, truncate, all these are examples of DDL. Whereas for DML, these are insert, update, and delete. Fine. So I hope that much is clear. We move further. And the most asked question, joins. If you're talking about SQL, you must know joins, be it any tech round of private company be it any written exam of a private company, be it any government agency, be it anybody who's asking about SQL, he will surely mention joins somewhere or the other. Fine. So talking about joins, a join clause is used to combine rows 
from two or more tables based on a related column between them. Why insert is used to basically combine rows of two different tables or more different tables. Fine. So examples of it are inner join, outer join, left join and right join. Now these four are to be understood very well and henceforth the next expected question we have is of inner join versus outer join versus left join versus right join. Now this is the hard work that I put in for you. Every time when I prepare slides, every time when I write the content, every time the single intention and the foremost intention that I have is I have to make things simpler for the students, difficult things, very, very simpler for the students. And it's very difficult to make difficult things simple, fine. If you carefully see, I have structured things in a manner where one after the other you keep getting the doubt and the answer, fine. So I hope if you like it, do tell me in comments. Now, talking about inner join, inner join returns only matching records between tables. In the tables, if you are having two tables, only the matching records would be returned. Left join returns all the records from the left table and matching records from the right table and non-matches are null. Right join returns all the records from the right table and matching from the left table, non-matches are null. Full join returns all records when there is a match in either table and non-matches are clearly null. Fine. So if we go further, there are two more keywords or commands which is group by and order by. Fine. They are often used various at various places and sometimes people get confused in them. So that's why it is a very, very widely used question. Fine. Widely asked question. So the order by clause sorts the data in ascending or descending order, whereas the group by clause groups the tuples, rows basically based on the similarities of columns. I hope that's pretty much clear. Now, what is acid property in SQL? So talking about acid property, acid property is basically about these four terms and their first letters are used as an acronym in the asset properties. Now carefully see, A stands for atomicity, C stands for consistency, I stands for isolation, D stands for durability. So atomicity guarantees that a transaction that comprises multiple operations, now transaction is a term that is used in databases. If you haven't read databases, then you have to read them first, fine. So here it guarantees that a transaction that comprises multiple operations is treated as a single unit. Fine. This means that either all operations of the transaction are executed or none of them are executed. So if in a transaction there are five operations, either all five will be executed or none of them will be executed. Then coming to the consistency, this guarantees that changes made within a transaction are populated across the whole database system. Fine. So this is often associated with data integrity. This is very widely asked. And if you mention this, that consistency is often associated with data integrity, then again, you're going to get some extra brownie points. Now coming to isolation, each transaction is isolated from the other transactions to prevent any data conflicts and durability guarantees that once a transaction is committed, it remains committed even after the case of failure. Fine. So that's about asset properties. We move ahead. And what's the difference between union and union all? Because they are often used at the place of each other. Some naive people use that. However, they have very, very different altogether results what they give. Union and union all, they are used to retrieve data from two or more tables. Fine. The key difference is that union removes duplicate records. Union all doesn't remove duplicate records. Fine. Union all includes all the duplicates, whereas union removes the duplicates. Fine. If you're having an employee table, you have two employees of same name and everything is same, union would not give you the duplicate record, fine. Whereas union all will give you the duplicate record. Now, what are the indexes? A database index is a data structure that improves the speed of data retrieval operations on a database table at the cost of additional writes and storage space. May to maintain the index data structure. Fine, now this is a very complex definition. Honestly telling you, it is just like indexing a book. Fine, it is just like that. You can straight away find a list rather than roaming around the complete book. You can straight away see the index list and find the data. 
so that is basically index fine indexes are used to quickly locate data without having to search every row in a database table every time the said table is accessed the basic point is you store indexes somewhere in a different table and from those indexes you straight away refer to the data and don't go row by row searching for your required data fine so that is indexing now finding second highest salary in a table and mostly it is employee table and this is one of the most asked question most asked sql query and very easy query all you need to do is you write this select max salary as second highest salary fine from employees table and you use where clause and then this inner query would return you the highest salary any value just below that would be returned to this second highest salary and you will get your result fine so this is very easy query anybody who has gone through the basics of SQL would easily understand this. Now moving ahead, views in SQL. Now in an SQL, in SQL a view is essentially a virtual table that is based on the result of a query. It doesn't store data itself but instead provides a way to simplify complex queries by storing them as reusable objects. So this is also asked with comparison to indexes. So people sometimes ask that what is the use of index and what is the use of view. So at that point of time, you can simply say that view is a saved SQL query that you can treat like a table in other queries. Fine, as simple as that. This is the most simple thing that can be written for views. If you haven't read about views, this would be tough for you to understand. If you're somebody who has read about views, then it would be very easy. But I would suggest you, if you haven't read, first read about views, implement them a bit. Once you've done that, this would be a cakewalk and you'll understand why it is in simpler language. Fine. Moving ahead. Where versus having clause. These are two clauses, where clause and having clause and how they are used and what is the difference, I'll give you here. So for where clause, the purpose is it filters records before any grouping or aggregation takes place. Before any grouping has taken place, where would be used. Fine. This applies to individual rows in a table. It is used with all types of SQL queries, including those without aggregation, like select, update, delete. These are not aggregation queries. But having clause is always used to filter aggregated results. Once the aggregation has been done, for example, using group by or while using functions like this count, fine, sum, if using such functions any aggregation has happened on those aggregated results you can apply having clause and this applies to groups of rows formed by the group by clause or any such aggregation function fine so this is used with aggregation functions in conjunction conjunction with group by as i told you these particular aggregation functions and that's the pretty much difference between these two fine so the primary difference is here aggregation has not taken place the rows have not been grouped and you can apply where clause whereas when the rows are grouped having clauses applied fine moving ahead between versus in versus like operators these are three operators in sql what's the difference again in the same manner between purposes used to filter the result set within a range of values fine within a range of values you filter out the result including the boundary values for example from 10 to 20 if you are filtering out these boundary values are also included fine this applies to numeric date or text values, fine. Whereas in is used to filter the result set based on a list of values. And this applies to specific values in a column, fine. Like this is used to filter the result set based on pattern matching, often used with wildcards like percentage and underscore to match parts of strings, fine. This applies to only text and string data, as simple as that, fine. Let's move ahead. And how do you find duplicate records in a table? Again, an SQL query, very frequently asked. And a lot of times people get confused in it. So this is the SQL query. If you're having a paper and pen, you can take this, note it down. All you need to do is write a select query. Fine, this is basically a primary select query. But here, you use select command, then column name, whatever column name you're referring to. Then you give count and then of that column name again and you write it as count such name can be assigned in sql from a particular table name you can mention table name here group by the rows of this column and you give the column name again and having count again the column name is passed 
and you put the condition that greater than 1. So, whenever you put this condition, this basically checks that the every entry which has appeared more than once, that would be returned and henceforth you will find the duplicate records. Fine. Now, moving ahead, it is the giveaway time. 15 questions have been done, but in the giveaway time, I had told you, we will select some few comments which will win the Prep Insta Prime subscription for free. So, this person who has put this comment on the Python roadmap, fine, Koturu Supraj, this is for you. You have won the Prep Insta Prime subscription for free. All you need to do is write us on support at the rate prepinsta.com. Now, interestingly, let me tell you one thing. Here, you should first of all send us YT account screenshots, fine, your YT account screenshot, where it is clearly visible that this is your username, number one. Number two, send us your name, email, year of graduation and phone number, fine. So, these are the details you should send. Also, you should go ahead, follow me on the Instagram and there text me out. On Instagram, I am available with Shuklaji Speaks username. You simply follow that and ping me there that I have won this and I will help you out with that. But there also I will need the same details which is YT account screenshot, name, email, year of graduation and phone number as simple as that. Fine. So to all of you, I will say go ahead, comment below this video because you can also stand the chance to win this kind of free subscription. Go ahead and test yourself out. You might stand a lucky chance to win Prep Insta Prime subscription for free. And follow me on social media handle, which is my Instagram. There you can directly connect to me and follow us on all the social media handles so that you never miss any hiring update. Subscribe to this channel if you want more such interesting content. And remember one thing, whatever knowledge you get here, spread it as far as you can. And that's all I can say to you. Keep doing good to others without any expectation. Good will come back to you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day ahead.